Within the last few years, some universities across the U.S. have seen an increase in emotional support animals coming to campus housing. Sharon Bagenda spoke with officials at UW-Green Bay about the rise in support animals, their qualifications, and the difference they make in the lives of some students and faculty. UWGB's Disability Services says service and emotional support animals are allowed on campus because of the Fair Housing Act. Fair Housing has determined that universities do need to look at that and be able to provide reasonable accommodations. So we have started to um, get more and more requests of emotional support animals. Last year, the university served 109 students with mental health disabilities. Of those, 13 required emotional support animals. In 2016, the university had 19 emotional support animals living on campus, the highest number yet. Natasha Schultz lives in university housing. People in her apartment building own support animals. It's a, honestly a wonderful program to have because sometimes it becomes too much and human contact, contact can only do so much and just having a very little friend with you that seems to help. Getting a support animal into campus housing is a rigorous process. What does the animal do to help with their treatment plan? So it isn't just, um, I want to bring my pet to campus. It is that it's part of your treatment plan with your treating professionals. Amy Malk lives and works at UWGB with her diabetes alert dog, Lily. She probably alerts anywhere from two to three times a day. Um, and sometimes on the severe lows, especially if I'm in a very busy day, I don't necessarily know that I'm low. Thank you. Even though Lily is not an emotional support animal, Mox says both service and support animals can be life-changing. As part of your treatment and as part of an ongoing process, um, ESAs are really important. They really do help our students as well as service animals. Um, service animals, honestly, my life without Lily would be drastically different.